If something like this happened to me, I would sooner throw them out the window, I would sooner flush them down the toilet before I shoved my bloody underwear into my boyfriend's cabinet. Hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome to my residential horror story or welcome back to my residential horror story. Today, instead of a nightmare apartment story time, I am going to be doing a nightmare neighbor story time. If you guys watched my apartment from hell story time, you will know that I had slight neighbor troubles in that one. I'll link it here if you haven't watched it. But the experience I've had at this apartment as far as neighbors go has been so, so much worse. Before we get into the video, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. Okay, so most people do have awful neighbors that are on a suspected drug trip every night until six in the morning, but most people don't get to confirm whether or not those suspected drug trips are in fact drug trips. I was one of the lucky ones. As I said, I had neighbors who they shared a wall with my bedroom that I sleep against. They would be screaming until six in the morning like every single day. Sometimes it would be from 3 p.m. when I got home from class to 6 a.m. the following day. And I mean screaming, like female horror movie type screams, like oh shit am I next type screams. There was one night that I actually almost called 911 because I genuinely thought some girl is getting full on murdered. And I complained to the office countless times and they're just really bad at responding. The head manager lady is super helpful but the staff would tell them to quiet down several times and it just did nothing. At one point they actually pissed off their upstairs neighbor so much that she came downstairs and she started yelling at them and I could hear her in my room and I was just rooting for her like in my bedroom I should have gone out there and joined her but you know passive-aggressive and then eventually the head manager ended up finding them because they weren't listening to the staff's like multiple warnings I think you're only allowed three or something they got way more than that so they got fined and it stopped for the most part after that it was still kind of bad but I just I hated these people to my very core so late last semester which would be in the fall time it was like November my apartment flooded because the basketball upstairs dribbled a little too hard in his bathtub and busted some pipes. What the fuck? What the fuck? I just don't know why these, like, it's coming through there. It's coming through there. I... It's leaking. I luckily was at home when this happened and I was able to call maintenance right away. It was like at midnight or two in the morning or something and they came and it took them two hours to shut off the water. <laughs> Needless to say, the majority of the entire first floor was flooded by the time they were actually able to turn off the water. So management ended up putting me in a hotel room and I was fine and it was all good and normal for me. My neighbors, however, did not come back. They were out of town and they did not come back until I had already not only spent the entire few days in a hotel room, but had moved back into my apartment and everything was dry and over with. And it had been at least a week since the flood had happened. So for some reason, I guess management didn't check to see if their apartment had flooded too. It was so obviously flooded because the water had drenched my carpet all the way up to the wall that we shared. Like it was obviously flooded in their apartment as well. I don't know, but my neighbors were gone for like a week. They weren't there to say anything when it happened and they had pissed so many tenants off by this point that maybe management was just kind of like, mm, I don't, I don't see flood. Where? So the flood is over. I moved back in. I'm all dry and happy. My neighbors come home to a very wet, stale, been sitting like this for a week, flooded apartment. And that was the most karmatic event I have ever experienced. Having to like watch them move all their stuff out and just knowing how awful it had to smell in there. And also the idea if they had left anything valuable or electronic on the floor, which they probably did because they were disgusting people. It got ruined. There's no way it didn't get ruined. So this happens and then it's just dead silent for the next few months. So I become convinced that they moved. And about a month ago, I found out I was right. They did break their lease, I guess, since no one checked on their flooded apartment for like a week. And the reason I found this out is because my apartment flooded again. And I had to move out of my apartment and into their old apartment while they replaced my carpet. This is where it gets interesting. So my apartment floods and I have to move next door. So I call my mom to recruit her to help me because I don't wanna move all my stuff. I haven't slept, it's like seven in the morning. So I call my mom to come help me and we start moving across the hall and the apartment 
is so disgusting. Like the carpet is just so gross. It obviously hasn't been cleaned at all since the flood. I'm assuming they just moved out with no obligations for like damages or cleaning because of them not checking on their obviously flooded apartment. This is kind of on management, but you know, nobody had cleaned it. Nobody was prepared for anyone to move in because it was kind of spur of the moment. My place flooded, I had to go over there, no one cleaned it, so that was up to me. And so it was super dirty, but not only that, but we begin to find things in this apartment. Like they obviously moved out in a huge hurry and left some of their stuff there. Like there was like clothes and like storage things and some other objects. I ended up taking a shower while my mom was helping me clean this place up and she was vacuuming. And she's vacuuming while I'm in the shower and she's finding jewelry everywhere, like earrings, unfortunately no diamonds. And suddenly she gets a bunch of little pills stuck inside her vacuum. And this is very exciting for her because she works in surgery. So she knew what these pills were. I can't remember the name of them, but she stormed into the bathroom while I was taking a shower to show me because she knew about this whole like drug trip, like insane, like how they were behaving and driving me insane. It was so satisfying to see these pills and know that I wasn't overreacting or being crazy or too sensitive. Like these people were on drugs and they left them on the floor when they left. <laughs> And let me just clarify real quick before I get into the next part. It was two boys living in this two bedroom apartment. The guy who shared the wall with me would have this crazy bitch over who would be the one who would be screaming all night. My neighbor himself was not that bad, but like dump your girlfriend. So the two weeks go by that I have to live in this other apartment while they're replacing my carpet. And the day comes when I get to move back into my apartment. So I start packing all of my things to move across the hall and I'm Packing my things out of the bathroom, I obviously put my things in the cabinets for those two weeks. So I'm looking through the cabinets to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. And there's a cabinet above the toilet and I open it and I'm looking to make sure it's completely empty. And I see something in the very back top shelf, way shoved in the back. And I'm like, oh, I don't wanna forget that. And it looks like a crumpled up towel or something like that. And so I put my hand in there and I pull it out. And it is a pair of bloody underwear, bloody, underwear and so as i said it was two boys living in this apartment so this was someone's girlfriend who came over was faced with this problem and decided the best course of action would be to shove them in her boyfriend's cabinet if something like this happened to me i would sooner throw them out the window i would sooner flush them down the toilet before i shoved my bloody underwear into my boyfriend's cabinet i hate gross I hate them so much. It costs zero dollars not to be a gross And that's pretty much where that story ends. If you think your neighbors are disgusting pieces of shit who are on drugs, they probably are. But if you have a chance to snoop through their abode, don't do it. Uh, because you're gonna end up wishing you could cut your hand off with the busted pipe that started this whole mess. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time because I suffered for it in more ways than you know. And let me know if you guys want to hear the story of exactly how two floods, one lease happened. So yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing day and don't ever shove your dirty ass, bloody ass, gross ass underwear in your boyfriend's cabinet because you're better than that. Bye guys. I know.